How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another satisfactory video. My name is Magneti and today we're going to be answering the question, what is satisfactory? We're going to be doing a satisfactory game review and hopefully by the end of the video I have helped you make your decision as to whether you want to buy satisfactory or not. So first off, I want to start with what is Satisfactory? And firstly, Satisfactory is still in early access at the time of recording this video. So just keep that in mind, you know, when you run into glitches and stuff, it is still in, uh, and you can see I'm in the experimental build, but it is currently still in the early access build. All right, continuing to answer the question, what is Satisfactory? Steam categorizes it with the tags of base building, open world, automation, crafting game. That's kind of a lot of tags, so I like to introduce the game as a futuristic industrialization game with a little bit of survival aspects in it. And that's really what it is, because you get to build massive factories similar to this one, or even bigger or smaller if you want, and you get to go out, explore, kill things, and have a lot of fun doing that aspect of the game as well. Now if you read the About This Game section on Steam for Satisfactory, you'll see that it has three little paragraphs. It'll say construct, automate, explore, and exploit. And really what constructing is talking about is just really the main bread and butter of the game. And it's gonna be building stuff just like this, like what I just did right there. Automating is gonna be um, this right here. So this little mini factory I've got going on, we've got some moving parts in here. It's all doing the work by itself and it's fed from the back end, which this is gonna look really messy, so I'm sorry in advance. It's fed from the back end back here, kind of feeds into the factory. So that's gonna be automation. And at the beginning of the game, you don't start out with that, you have to do everything manually, but the game works it, its own magic and just really just makes it extremely fun, even though you're doing everything by hand. And the tutorial is amazing as well, and it doesn't even really feel like a tutorial. But anyways, moving on to explore and exploit that's gonna be exactly this right here, exploring this amazing, beautiful world. It, it's just breathtaking. Amazing to explore, all kinds of things to gather. Pretty unique uh, Easter eggs that I'm gonna talk about later as well. Okay, moving on to game objectives. That's gonna be the next category I wanna talk about. And that's gonna be everything in here. This is called the hub, this whole little building right here. And without spoiling too much, just gonna try and show you tier zero here. So this is gonna be hub upgrade one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is really the tutorial right here. And what this does is it starts you out, you know, um, you'll start out in the game, you'll get this little box in your inventory. Let me show you real quick. It kind of looks like, psych, okay. Looks like this right here, this little thing right here. And if we just pick that up, ignore that package fuel here. Hey, if you've gotten some value out of this video, go ahead and just please click that subscribe button so that I can continue producing more videos like this and continue to give you a lot of value in any video I make. Thanks for the support. That death was for you. All right, anyways, now that I have that figured out, you saw the little box, that's what it looks like, and then it'll give you the ability to place down the hub, this right here, boom, just like that. And then you'll come into the hub terminal, You'll be talking to this robot that'll give you directions and you'll start off with hub upgrade one. You'll have to build or, or uh, excuse me, this will be your rewards here. And it only costs 10 iron rods and you can make that at the crafting bench right here. You just need to collect some uh, iron ore and then smelt it into iron ingots or excuse me, actually you can create iron ingots. My goodness, it's been a ha handful of, oh my God, I can't even speak either. It's been a hot minute since I've handled this crafting bench. So ingots, so you'll grab some iron ore, craft it into ingots right here, then you'll scroll down. You won't have this many things, uh, just I'm at the end of the game here. So iron ore to iron ingots, iron ingots to iron rods, and then once you have 10 of them, you come over here, go to hub upgrade one, boom, and you're, boom, you're done. Awesome, first hub upgrade. And that's the, the, t the tutorial. You can make that last as long as you want. You can go out exploring, killing stuff. You can do, this tutorial can last anywhere from, I'd say about an hour, maybe two, to like 10 to 20 hours if you're quite the explorer. So, moving on. All right, so next I wanna talk about what I find fun about Satisfactory or what I enjoy, enjoy about Satisfactory. 
And really my favorite part of the game is the exploration aspect and being able to build massive bases like this. I, I did use a mod to create a base like this, but you can still build it without mods. It would just take a very, very long time. So really what I do enjoy the most about this game is exploring and being able just how Coffee Stain Studios implemented the building aspects into the game. This is really unique and really fun and it makes the game really interesting. Really as a whole, this game is just unique. Being able to industrialize an entire planet is pretty dope. So second to last, I want to talk about what is unique about Satisfactory. And like I just said, pretty much everything is unique about this game. Nothing's really ever been done like this. But really, if we want to talk specifics, there's um, some pretty cool collectible Easter egg type items that you can actually gather in the world. And they're, they're, they're really cool and interesting, and they provide a little bit of, um, un, I guess you could say, unknown lore. And I just find it really, really, like, that's extremely unique. I've never played a video game that has, like, gatherable Easter egg type collectible items that adds into the lore of the game. All right, so finally, I wanna go over what I like to call my 1000 point game report card for Satisfactory. That's what I'm gonna call it for every game review. It's got 1000 points in it, and it's got about seven different, um, I guess you could call it categories that I will be uh, determining the rating of the game. So the first one is going to be the story, storyline, or objectives. And so this game doesn't exactly have a storyline, but it does have objectives. And I find the objectives in the game to be extremely smooth between objectives, you know, like I was showing you the tutorial, Hub 0 to 6 uh, upgrades, those are super smooth, amazing, it doesn't even feel like a tutorial. And then even from there on after going from tier 1 to 8, it does get increasingly difficult, and for me personally, it became so difficult that uh, it was really hard f essentially for my mind to be able to comprehend and build bases to um, support all the way up to tier eight, and I haven't ever actually gotten that far without, I guess you can say cheating, but really just using mods and building myself a creative world like this one. So it, ga it got given a near perfect score of 325 out of 350 for the first category. And that is simply due to the fact that my small brain cannot comprehend how to build massive factories in this game. So if you feel like you've got Jimmy Neutron brain, then absolutely go, go wild, go ham on this game. It's super fun. Second category is going to be character, environment, or world development. So those three things within the game developing. Uh, and I find this to be the second most important thing in a game, whereas I find story, storyline, or objectives in the game to be the most important. So character development, again, not really a thing in this game. Environment and world development, though, is extremely important in this game. And it is, like, it is literally so vital that if it was even a little bit bad, this game would not be very fun at all. And the environment and the world develops as you play it. The, the mobs in the game don't really change. But what's interesting is that to uh, gather more high level or high end or end game materials, you do need to fight harder enemies. So that is a very good aspect to the game as you know, the environment and the world it kind of sort of does develop around you. And you can also essentially alter the world to your liking by building it in it and around it. Third category is gonna be user interface. And I find that to be one of the, not, not one of the more important ones, but it is third for a reason. Uh, these next few things I do find to be equally important. And that got a 100 out of 150, whereas I don't believe I said previously the uh, environment and world development got a perfect score of 300 out of 300. So user interface 100 out of 150. I believe that the user interface is pretty important in any game because if the user interface is too complicated or too hard to understand uh, in the beginning of the game for newer players, it can deter people from really wanting to play the game and getting into it. But I believe that this user interface is really, really good. It got a 66% if you want to categorize 100 out of 150 into percentage. So 66% is, you know, that doesn't really sound that good, but I gave it 100 out of 150 because I feel like the user interface is pretty good, but it could definitely be better. And there's a lot of mods that give the interface, not the interface itself, but the almost like a quality of life that affects the interface. It's kind of hard to explain, but the overall usage and interface of how you build things and connect stuff and everything like that could definitely be a little bit better. So the fourth category is going to be the player and or game physics. And I gave this a 95 out of 100 because I believe that the game physics in this uh, futuristic different planet type 
world is uh, super accurate to the vibe that Satisfactory gives off. All right, the next category is gonna be NPC or mob interactions. And since there aren't really any NPCs except for the uh, robot voice in your head in the early and throughout the entire game that helps you out, um, mostly rating this off, off of uh, mob interactions. And mob interactions is just entailing things like, um, you know, how the, the fighting style of the game, is it extremely difficult? Is it balanced well? And in the beginning of the game, it can be extremely hard to fight certain mobs, but you do just have to be careful when you're exploring to avoid those uh, end game areas. And outside of that, you'll you'll be all right. You just gotta watch, uh, what, you know, look up on YouTube how to fight different mobs. And I actually do have a YouTube video on that if you're interested, but this category got a 90 out of 100. And if you do end up needing help fighting mobs, go ahead and just uh, click the card up in the top right corner of the screen that will direct you to my video on everything about the enemies in Satisfactory. So my next category is uh, the sixth one, and that's, is it playable? And this one is just given a pass or a fail. And since this game is in early access mode, uh, surprisingly, it is extremely playable. And if you compare it to Cyberpunk 2077 in early 2021 when it was released, which is what, you know, that's it, that's the time of year right now, but that's when this video was uploaded. If you compare the playability of Cyberpunk to Satisfactory, uh, yeah, this game is definitely, it, it, it could be released right now and would be much better than that. But yes, it passed, it's playable, extremely fun game. So seventh category doesn't really go into the 1000 point report card, but that is my personal overall opinion of the game and I gave it a 10 out of 11. And uh, I gave it a 10 out of 11 because, you know, no game's perfect and I'm not really a true believer in giving a perfect score because, I don't know, I'm just weird like that. All right, so the overall report card for Satisfactory is a 91%, and that means that it has been awarded the Medal of Magnificence. Haha, <laughs> get it? Pun. Magneti. Mag is my nickname. Uh, anyways, so if you found this video to be very valuable to you, or you think you find a value in it for a friend, go ahead and share it to a friend, or give me a like if you did like the video and got some value out of that. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video. Peace!